want to say thank you, O oh God, because you are a great Father, a Father that loves us. You are full of compassion, merciful and kind. Father, we say thank you because you are faithful. You are faithful to each one of us. And even as we come before you, Lord, we know that, God, you hear and you answer prayer. We know that, God, you are here with us. We know that, God, you are journeying with us through this time of prayer and fasting. We thank you that you are God who sits on the throne and that your name is exalted forever. We thank you, O oh God, that there is no one like you, that you are not man, that you should lie, that you are not the son of man, that you should repent. Father, you speak and you perform. You who has spoken and your word is established. That which is established surely comes to pass. We thank you, O oh God, that your promises are yes and they are amen. We thank you, O oh God, that we can stand in your presence. Father, we come boldly before you. Lord, not because of anything, but because of the blood of Jesus that covers us. The blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We want to say thank you for the shed blood of Jesus. Just take a moment and say thank you because he is a faithful God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do, oh God. We thank you for your greatness. We thank you, Lord, because you look upon us with favor. We thank you, Father, that your graces are ever before us, that we are walking in favor and in your graces, that we are standing firm Lord, we thank you, oh God, that the battle belongs to you. We thank you, oh Lord, that you are at work in our hearts and in our lives. Oh, how we come before you to just worship you, oh Lord. We exalt you because you are true to your word and you are accomplishing many things in our lives, oh God. Father, we just want to sing a hallelujah to you. We just want to say hallelujah because you are God. We worship and we bless you, Father, in the name of Jesus.
us what he is. Holy, we declare it's holy.
Jesus, you alone are holy. There is no God like you. Just to worship the holy God. Oh, forget about everything. Who you are, where we come from. Oh, in the heaven, all oh, the elders bow down and the worship even angels say, "Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty." Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> what a privilege! What a privilege! What a privilege! What a privilege! Once we were. Oh, so did the sin, but the Lord loved us, He redeemed us, He washed us with His precious blood, brought to the presence of God, and given us the confidence to approach the throne of grace and call Him up our Father. Call Him tonight up our Father, hallelujah. We are washed with the blood of Jesus, we are the children of the new covenant who have the authority in the name of Jesus, who sealed with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Declare victory tonight. Declare victory tonight. Declare victory tonight. Hallelujah. Father, on the fourth evening of our prayer and fast, as your precious children, we come before you, O oh God. From the day one we began, you have been with us. It is only through your grace we made it. And what we long is not the worldly thing. We long for you, Jesus. As you are taking us to stand firm in Christ in 2022 for our supernatural victories. Lord, thank you. Thank you for our empty house of prayer family, our congregation, our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our children, our young people of God, everyone of Jesus. May you watch over the Lord. Lord, every day you are speaking to us, giving us a new revelation, giving us a new word. Thank you, Lord. Father, don't the fourth evening. If the devil and the team has any agenda that we will not successfully complete these 21 days of prayer and fasting, we paralyze it in the name of Jesus. Any death, any accidents, any sicknesses, any confusion, or any conflict, division, anything devil wanted to bring into house of prayer, family, territory, we permanently paralyze it in the name of Jesus. We seal your people with the blood of Jesus and release tranquility, unity, success, prosperity. Oh God, we have the grace to stand firm in Christ and to receive the victory. We shall complete these 21 days with the powerful living testimonies God. Thank you, God, for the man of God. Lord, thank you for Bishop Mukuka who have finished. And thank you, Lord, for the man of God whom you sent tonight. We pray, God, you will use him mightily. Prepare us, O oh God. With authority of given to us, we bind the strong man of Kanini and loose on the Holy Spirit. May you move with angelic visitation. Commit the rest of the service in the hand of Jesus. Bless your God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Please take your seat. Praise the Lord and good evening, church. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. And that is His. Can we give a big round of applause? I just appreciate our God for what he has done the day one we began till God has been with us. Can you look at your neighbor and say, you look glorious, awesome, filled with the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. And tell that brother, that sister, we shall make it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I just wanted to let you know, the time we are spending is not wasting. We are drawing more closer and more closer to the Lord. As the word of God spoke to us, 2022, we shall stand firm in Christ for our victory. 
our supernatural victory. Hallelujah. Let me take once again this opportunity to welcome you all on the fourth evening. May God bless us. Are we blessed, church? Past four evening, uh, three evening and Sunday, we were blessed by Bishop Gift Mukuka, and we thank God for the revelation that has come to us. You know, we as a church, and I know all of us as a congregation, we are not a people who like to entertain the nonsense. We are the people who wanted to hear the word of God. Our solution is in the word. If you stand firm in the word, we shall make it. So thank God for the servant of God who came and preached and tonight and uh, our Reverend Sikanika from Fatima Livingstone Assembly and uh, he's not a uh, new to house of prayer and he's been here, a mighty man of God, a senior pastor to Fatima and tonight we are honored to have him. Let's put our hands together, welcome uh, Reverend Sikanika to come and minister the word of God. Welcome man of God, welcome. Amen. Thank you so very much, our dear pastor. Amen. Uh, first of all, first of all, I would like to begin by greeting all of you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. You're such a wonderful people. I believe the Lord will bless us together. Today in this meeting, as fellowship of believers, amen. You are not here by mistake, you are here for a purpose. Hallelujah. I also want to bring greetings from Fatima Assemblies of God. They are greeting you, House of Prayer. They are saying you are wonderful people. May God continue to richly bless you in the name of Jesus. I also want to bring greetings from my wife. And my children, they are also greeting you in the name of Jesus. Most of the times when I tell my wife to say, are you not accompanying me uh, for the evening service at House of Prayer? She's fond of saying, it. Ah, I can't leave my children behind. <laughs> so we thank God for the ladies because you are so marvelous for your children. Amen. Hallelujah. So, before I go into the preaching of the, of the weight, I just want, first of all, to recognize the presence of the Lord. In this place, I believe the presence of God is so heavy in this place, and it shall see us through in this service. Because without the presence of the Lord, you can do nothing. In the presence of the Lord, we learn to understand the mysteries of and the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I thank God so very much for his presence in this place. And I strongly believe his presence is here. And the Lord is going to minister to us in a special way. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because when the presence of the Lord and the glory of the Lord was upon Moses, nothing evil drew nigh unto Moses. Even tonight, I pray. That no devils, no demons shall draw nigh unto us because the presence of the Lord is upon us. Amen. Hallelujah. So, our dear pastor, our Pastor Joseph, I just want to thank you so very much, sir, once again for extending your invitation to me to come and minister at this church. Sir, God bless you so much for inviting me once again to come and preach the word of the Lord at this church. I know I'm not new here. I'm not a stranger. I've been here several times. And I believe the Lord will bless us together tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Board members, I want to thank you. I want to recognize your praises. And thank you so very much for welcoming me to this assembly to come and minister the word of the Lord. Church, the entire congregants, I want to say thank you so very much for accepting me to come and minister the word of the Lord here. In Jesus' name, amen. 
So let us be positioned in the Lord and let us be awake in the spirit and be ready to receive uh, the dynamics which the Lord has for us tonight. I believe tonight the Lord will touch us in a spectacular way. The Lord will touch us in a new way. And we are not going to be the same after this service in Jesus' mighty name. Things are going to change in our lives because our God is here to transform and to change our lives and to minister to us in a special way. So shall we pray. Our God of heaven and earth, I worship you and I give you the praise and the honor and the adoration because you deserve them all. We bless your name, our mighty God. God, our redeemer who lives, the sustainer of our lives. We thank you that you are God and there's no any other in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. Oh God, our maker, and our creator, our own all, the Lord who reigns and lives forever, mighty God, mighty in power, to you alone be all the glory from now on and forevermore. Now, Lord, tonight, we come before you as your people, that, Lord, we may listen and learn from you tonight. In the name of Jesus. You are the Lord who has things over your word to perform it. May you watch over your way tonight to perform it over our lives. Jesus, we need more of your person in our lives so that you may teach us the Rhema word from above. The way that shall cause us to come to you. So that as we come to you tonight, my God and my Father, you may touch us and help us, Lord, to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let me acquainted to your weight. As your weight comes, give out the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to understand the truth that you intend to communicate unto us to your word tonight. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray. That Yahweh, let your way to come to heal, to lead, to recompense, and to restore our comfort tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. For your word has given us eternal life. Life that shall not be destroyed. Life that shall never be lost. Life that shall not perish. In the name of Jesus. Now, gracious Yahweh, I pray that no single one of us tonight shall be taken captive by the enemy to resist your word. No single one of us shall resist the inspiration and the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. Now you alone, mightier and greater God, the Lord is in us. I pray in the name of Jesus that Yahweh, may you contend against the enemy so the enemy shall not snatch away the word that you shall communicate into our lives tonight. Give us a listening ear. I refuse to speak bad words. Use me as your vessel. Mighty God, as a conduit. Use me, O oh God, as your mouthpiece to communicate your word unto your people tonight. And I believe that, Lord, your words shall come to inspire us, to encourage us, to edify us, and shall make us tonight to stand firm in Christ for supernatural victories. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation to quicken us unto your word. And I pray that, Jehovah, we are joint heirs with you. Tonight, through the ministry of your word, we shall enjoy fellowship with you, fellowship with other believers tonight. To the glory of your name, I pray that after the preaching of your word, mighty God, things shall not be the same. You shall change us from degree, from one glory to another in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Yahweh. I pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. As every saint agrees upon together and says, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God. 
and excuse me for a while. I forgot to switch off my phone. Amen. So we thank God for giving us the opportunity to come for this service tonight. Amen. Indeed, it's a great privilege. We thank God for that. And we believe that the Lord is going to minister to us in a mighty way and in a unique way. Hallelujah. So let us just be ready to receive our expectations from the Lord. The Lord we serve is the God of business. He's in the business of making us to stand firm in the law for supernatural victories. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today, we are looking at a theme that is entitled, Stand Firm in the Lord. Stand firm in Christ for supernatural victories. So I have not come, I've not come here with a, a new theme. I will use the same theme that our dear pastor and the board members have given, have, have given us. And I'm going to use the same scriptures which uh, we have been given for this year's 2022 prayer and fasting program. Amen. Then tomorrow, that's when I'll come up with my own scriptures and uh, new themes and the other themes. That other day, the same. But for today, I will use the same theme and the same scripture. Amen. So the word of the Lord declares under the theme, stand firm in Christ for supernatural victories. My word that I'm going to deliver tonight is going to come from Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 4. That is the scripture I've uh, chosen particularly. So the word of the Lord says, The Lord your God will go with you and shall fight for you. Not you fighting, him fighting on your behalf. And will fight for you against your enemies. And he shall save you. May God bless the reading of his word. Listen, church. The Lord tonight is saying, there are so many believers in the body of Christ who have struggled for so long with defeat. It's like in the church, defeat has become a new normal, like coronavirus. Most of the believers in the Lord, the so-called Christians, they are walking defeated in the house of the Lord, and yet they are claiming to be Christians. But they are walking defeated, and they cannot even realize that they are living defeated lives by Satan. The reason why we don't realize that we are walking defeated as Christians, it is because we have not learned to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. So even when you are walking defeated in the kingdom of God, you cannot realize that you are being defeated. Why? Because you have not taken some time some time to do what? To stand faith in the Lord for supernatural victories. So the Lord tonight is saying, enough is enough. You have walked for so long in those defeats. The Lord is coming through for you tonight. The Lord is coming through for us tonight. And he's saying, if you shall stand firm in me, and I shall grant you supernatural victories over your life in the name of Jesus. So the Lord is saying, we have struggled for so long. We have struggled for so long in our Christianities with the battles. We have struggled so long with defeats. So tonight the Lord is saying, he is putting an end to our defeats, to our struggles. So that from today, after these 21 days of prayer and fasting, we may begin to walk in God's freedom and liberty. 
in the name of Jesus. So the time for your bondages are over. Hallelujah. We have worked for so long in our struggles. We have been working for so long in the body of Christ with defeat. So the Lord is granting us victory over our defeat, over our struggles and bondages so that we may, be, we may begin to walk in Christian freedom and liberty. So tonight, as you have come for this service, if you shall take a step of faith to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victory, listen to what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, he shall grant you victory over your life in the name of Jesus. The Lord tonight, if we stand firm, we take the step of faith to stand firm in the Lord. The Lord is promising us that today and tonight, he shall do what? The Lord shall grant us victory over our lives, over our families, over our careers, over our jobs, employments, over our academics, of our projects, of our ministries, of our families. The Lord tonight is saying, if we shall take a step of faith now to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories, the Lord tonight going to grant us victory in every aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So what you just need to do is stand firm in the Lord. If we are to experience supernatural victories, Hallelujah. Listen, church. The Lord is saying, this year, 2022, you shall not enter this year with deficit carryovers. Your deficit carryovers must remain in the year 2021. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall not enter the year 2022. With deficit carry over us. The Lord is granting us divine appointment this year. We shall walk in the victory of the Lord. That's what the Lord has declared in the name of Jesus Christ. All the things, the, the good things from the Lord that you lost over your life last year. This year come 2022, you are reclaiming them back over your life. Because this year is our year of restoration, our year of recovery. It's our year of walking in God's victory. Hallelujah. If you did not do well last year, this year you shall do well. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we listening? If you did not do well last year, this year you shall do well. Hallelujah. Because this is our year of moving to the next level of success. Tell your name, I say, this year I'm succeeding. Whether the devil likes it or not, we are succeeding. Hallelujah. Now, narrowing down our God to the portion of scripture that we just read. The way that the Lord declares in Deuteronomy 20, this is 4, that the Lord your God Mark that word. The Lord your God. So each time, listen church, each time the word, the Lord your God is often mentioned in the Bible. It means that the Lord is referring us back to our covenant with God. So when the Bible says, the Lord your God simply means that the, our God, our God of covenant, who never forgets his promises, ever mindful of his covenant, is reminding us about our covenant with him. The reason why most of us as Christians, we are walking defeated in the body of Christ, it is because we have broken our covenant with the Lord. We have broken our covenant. So that's why as we enter to the year 2022, New Year, the Lord is saying we need to renew our covenant. 
We need to renew our covenant with the Lord. Even in the physical world, if you are not actualizing or reactivating your bank account, it shall be declared dormant. It shall be declared what? Dormant. No purpose, no service. Which means it can't function. It's dormant. So even this year, if we want to renew our covenant with the Lord, our God shall declare us dormant. And he shall never use us this year to walk in God's supernatural victories. It's only when you take some time tonight to do what to rethink over and say this year, I want to reactivate my covenant with the Lord. I want to actualize my covenant with the Lord. The covenant to walk what? To walk in God's supernatural victory. The covenant that shall cover God's blessings, favor over my life, prosperity, increase, multiplication, healing, and protection over my life. Covenant that shall cover, that shall cover spiritual what? Victory over my life in the name of Jesus. So this year, we need to reactivate our covenant with the Lord. The covenant to do what? To stand firm in class for supernatural victories. We have broken our covenant with God. No wonder why we are always walking defeated as Christians in the body of Christ. Believers, you have no impact in the Lord, in the kingdom of God. So the Lord is saying, reactivate your covenant. Because you have broken my covenant. So tonight, we need to renew our covenant with the Lord. And say to the Lord, all the eternal and divine promises, which are promised unto me, endorsed into your covenant, in your covenant. This year, they shall be my portion. So we need to return back to our covenant with God. We have broken our covenant with God. So that's why the Bible says, if we reactivate our covenant with God, that's when we shall go with God in this year. And when we go with God this, this, in, in, in this year, then the Lord who granted victory to the Israelites in the world that is fought, against their enemies. He shall also fight against our enemies. Come challenges of our lives. Difficulties in our lives. Problems in our lives. They shall not cause us to commit suicide. Instead, we shall stand strong in the Lord and say, I know my God. I know my God is with me. My Redeemer is with me. As long as he's with me, I have made a covenant with, with him. In the same way, he fought the battles of the Israelites and granted them victory over their battles. And he has not changed today, yesterday, and forever is the same. If he granted victory over the Israelites against their enemies and he has not changed, he shall also do the same unto me. If I enter the year 2022 with the Lord, so God wants us to enter into this year with him so that God can grant us supernatural victories in every area of our lives and in all the aspects of our lives. So if you want to see God's victory this year, you need to be with God. Because the Israelites were with God. He went with them. Hallelujah. Now listen. You can never stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. If you are not living a life that is focused on God. No ways. Whether you try to use shortcuts, it won't happen. Whether you try to use mental gymnastics, it won't work. Hallelujah. If you want to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories, this year we must take a step of faith to live a life that shall be focused on God. In focus, there's tremendous power. Listen, church. The Bible says, 
or rather the Bible records, to say the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ is the wisdom and the power. The crucifixion of Jesus, it is the wisdom of God and the power of God. So if you are living a life that is focused on Jesus Christ, the Lord shall give you wisdom. The Lord shall give you power. Power to do what? To stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. He shall give you wisdom. Wisdom to do what? To navigate your life. To stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. So if you don't focus on Jesus, you shall never have the wisdom. You shall never have the power to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. We need the wisdom of God and the power of God. That's why the Bible says the crucifixion of Jesus with the power of God and the wisdom of God. Wisdom to do what? To help us. To do what? To stand firm in God for supernatural victories and the power of God. To make us do what? Stand firm in Christ for supernatural victories. So if you are not living a life this year, a life that is focused on God, this theme will not be your portion. You shall achieve nothing. So, we need to let God go with us in this year 2022. 20, now, how can we provoke God? Are you listening? How can we provoke God? Or how can we do what? How can we attract God to come to us so that we may enter with him in this year 2022 so that as he goes with us in this year he may fight our battles on our behalf and guarantee us victory over our battles what we need to do is to do what to embrace a right believing in the lord listen to this right believing leads to right living are we listening How can you attract the attention of God so that God can go with you in this year and fight your battles on your behalf and guarantee you supernatural victories? You need to embrace the right living before God. Believe, right believing leads to right living. If your belief system in the Lord is right, you shall live right before the Lord. Are we listening? I am saying, as Christians, the cross must be the object of our faith in the mighty name of Jesus. We must continue to believe in the finished redemptive work which Jesus Christ performed on the cross at Calvary. That is right believing in Jesus' name. The moment you shall embrace right believing, you shall arrive at a place of right living. And when now you begin to live right before the Lord, after you have believed right, continue to live right before the Lord. Continue to live right before the Lord. Every time live right before the Lord. Every time live right before the Lord. Listen, church, when you continue to live right before the Lord, every time you live right before the Lord, you shall attain a level of sanctification. Sanctification that leads to what? To intimacy. And when you continue to live a life of what? Of a close relationship with God. You continue to live in intimacy with God. It means that you shall become united with Jesus. And when you become one with Jesus, it means you are with Jesus. Now the word of the, the Lord declares in Deuteronomy 20, this is so, that the Lord was with the Israelites. And because he was with them, he granted them, he guaranteed them victory. So now when you continue to live righteously before the Lord, what shall happen? It means that you shall be united now with Jesus. Because every time when you are living a holy life before the Lord, you shall become one, one with God. You shall be united to God. You shall become one with God. You shall begin to think like God. You shall begin to do things like God. The moment you begin to do that, it means that now you are one with Christ. You are with Christ. And when Christ is with you, come challenges of life. He shall enter 
it shall, it shall, it shall cause you to face those challenges with him. Come problems, come difficulties in our lives. You shall face them with God. And when you do that, the Lord shall grant you victory over your problems, over your challenges, difficulties in your life. Why? Because Jesus is with you. Hallelujah. That's how we, we attract Jesus to come to our life so that we can be with Jesus. So that when you are with him, he can make you conquer in your life. Otherwise, if you are fighting battles alone, you shall be a dangerous and a terrible loser. Hallelujah. That's how Jesus Christ comes to us so that we can become one with him. And when you are with him, then you'll fight your battles on, on your behalf and guarantee you victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now listen, church. I want now to get to the crucial part of the message. You can never stand firm in the Lord until when you acquire certain requisites from the Lord to make you stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. Now, what is a requisite? A requisite is something necessary for a purpose. So if you don't have these five unfailing requisites, if you don't acquire them over your life from Jesus, you shall never stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. I stand here to believe that some of us who are here, I believe that you're in the business world. Hello? Now, when it comes to business, you cannot start a business or establish a business without, first of all, putting resources together. You need to put resources together and begin to organize yourself and to act upon those resources in order for your business to take off. Failure to that, your business will never start. So similarly, in the kingdom of God, if you don't have these five unfailing resources, requisites, which I'm going to communicate to you tonight, you shall never stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victory. Hallelujah. What is requisite number one? The Lord is faithful. And our God is a God of truth. He has revealed to us tonight, and he's going to reveal to us tonight, five unfailing requisites which can make us or help us. These are necessary. That's why I said a requisite is something necessary for a purpose. In order for you to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories, you need to have these five necessities. Five necessities. Resource number one is to stand in the authority of your position in Christ. You must know that you are a child of God has got authority in Jesus. By the authority that is vested in us, by the virtue of Jesus Christ being in us, because the moment we gave our lives to God, Jesus came to stay in our lives. And simultaneously, the Holy Spirit came to live in us, to dwell in us permanently. So now, this Holy Ghost, which is vested in us, by the virtue of Jesus Christ being in us, it gives us the power to exercise. Power to exercise over the demons, or to exercise our authority over the demons, over Satan, and gaining victory over them all. 
We are children of authority because the one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. So we must be living with the awareness that as a child of God, I've got authority over Satan, over demons, and they shall by no means do what defeat me. I shall walk victorious over them. Why? Because I am a child of authority. That's why Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, the Bible records to say, the moment you received Christ, it will mean that you will arise with the who? Jesus Christ. And you are seated at the right hand side of our living God in the heavenlies. And again in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 21, it says, and all powers and principalities, they are under our feet. So if you are a child of God and you assume the right authority over your life, you shall confront Satan. You shall confront the demons. And you shall tell them with all the authority from the Lord above and say, you demons, you Satan, come and leave my presence. Get away from my life. And they shall obey. Why? Because they are fearing the delegated power that is in you. Because authority is delegated power. You shall tell them to say, Come on, move away from my presence. And they will go. And they shall never interfere with your life. So requisite number one that we need to have is to stand in authority of our position in Christ. If you know that you have got authority in the Lord as a child of God, you shall never be defeated by the enemy. Demons will not come near you. You shall command them to go and they will go in Jesus' mighty name. So requisite number one is to stand in the authority of your position in the Lord. If you acquire that requisite from the Lord, you shall stand firm in Christ for supernatural victories. Requisite number two, word of God. You need the word of God. If you are a believer who doesn't have the word, forget. You can't stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. Because the Bible says in John 1, verse 1, in the beginning there was the word, and the word was with God, and this word was God. So which means that if you are a carrier of God's word, it means you are carrying God in your life. Hallelujah. And when you are carrying God in your life, it means that God is with you. And because God was, was with the Israelites, he granted, he guaranteed them victory in every areas of their lives. Even us, if we are carriers of the word of the Lord, it means that we are carrying God in our lives, on our backs. We are carrying God in the mighty name of Jesus. And if God is with us, come challenges of our lives, we shall walk victoriously over them. Why? Because the originator, the manufacturer of what? Of victory is with us. If God is with you, nothing shall be against you. So you need the word of the Lord. As we point number two, to injure the enemy and gain victory over certain walk and go supernatural power. So we need the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God says in Ephesians 6, 17, that the word of the Lord is the sweat of the spirit. Now, when you look in the New Testament, you discover that, you discover that there are two Greek words that translate word. What are those two Greek words? Logos and Rema. Now, what is Logos? When I went to Botswana, a pastor was asking me, Pastor, what is, what is Logos? What is Rema? <laughs> Amen. So, Logos is God's written word. Rema is God's spoken word. Now, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, the word used here is Rema. God's spoken word. The Bible says the word of the Lord is the sweat of the spirit. So which means you can use the word of the Lord to conquer in your life. Even Jesus, he used the word of the Lord. Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11. He used the word of the Lord to defeat the devil. 
when the, the devil said, turn these stones into bread so that you may eat, Jesus just rose up confidently and he spoke the word of the Lord to Satan and said, it's not by bread alone that a man shall live, but even the word of the Lord that proceeds from the mouth of God. So he used the word of God to defeat the enemy. Even us, the requisite that we need to have also to defeat the enemy and to walk in God's supernatural victory is by doing what? By being armed with the word of the Lord. Be armed with the word of God. So the word they are used in Ephesians 6, the 7 is rhema. God's spoken word. Tonight, I want to speak victory over your lives. In the name of Jesus. I speak the word of victory in your family. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak the word of victory in your marriage. In the name of Jesus. If you are here, I, truth, I, I strongly believe that there's someone here who wants to start a project this year. I want to speak the word of victory over your project. In the name of Jesus. You shall start that project this year and you shall finish it. Why? Because after these 21 days of prayer and fasting, you shall carry the finishing anointing to finish your project to, in this year in the name of Jesus. Because the word of the Lord says, for the hands of Zerubbabel, Zechariah 4, verse 6 to 9, the hands of Zerubbabel that started the temple shall finish the temple. If you are here and you are planning to start a project, don't give up. I have come to encourage you that you shall start that business and that project and you shall finish it. Why? Because after these 21 days of prayer and fast, you carry the finishing anointing to finish your project in the name of Jesus Christ. So I declare the word of the Lord over your business. I declare the word of victory over your project, over your business, over your marriages. I have come to speak to someone here that your financial problem, your economic problem, your social problem, the Lord is granting you victory in all those aspects of your life because the word of the Lord says so. Hallelujah. So we need the word. Speak the word of the Lord to your situation. When you are sick, tell God, tell the devil to say, devil, the, the word of the Lord tells me in Exodus 15 verse 26 that the Lord is my healer. When you are broke, tell Satan to say, take your brokenness away. The Lord shall supply for all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When you are surrounded by fear, rise up and quote Philippians 4, verse 13 and say, I can do all things through God who strengthens me. Therefore, I shall not fear. Quote the word. If you are a believer who is always moving in the word of the Lord, you shall stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. Hallelujah. Now, when the Bible says you can do all things possible through Christ Jesus who strengthens you, does it mean that you can also make a computer? Can you make a, comput a computer? Can you manufacture a computer? You can. <laughs> when the word of the Lord says, I can do all things possible through Christ who strengthens me, it means that whether things are difficult for you, continue to live a life of trust in God. When you begin to live like that, you shall conquer in your life. Requisite number three, prayer and fasting. Listen, church, when the pastor calls for such meetings of prayer and fasting, do not think that he is troubling you. He's not troubling us. In fact, he's helping us to strengthen our spiritual muscles so that now we can confront the devil and his demons and all his cohorts and gain victory over them all in the name of Jesus. Any believer who does not pray and fast, can never stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. So you need to, find, to be finding some time to pray and fast. Because when you are praying and fasting, it means when the pastor here calls for such meetings of prayer and fasting, it means that in a nutshell, the picture that is trying to, put, to, to portray it is that we as house of prayer, our dependence is on God. Hallelujah. So prayer and fasting makes us to put our dependence and our reliance on God. Jesus Christ, when he went on Mount Transfiguration, he left his disciples behind. And do you know what happened? A certain man brought his son who was demonized. 
to what to the disciples of Jesus. And they failed to cast out the demon from that boy. And when Jesus descended the mountain, he was encountered by the father of that demonized boy. And the man said, Jesus, help me. My son is being troubled by a demon. I brought him to your disciples, but they failed to cast out the demon out of him. Why? Because they were busy eating. Jesus Christ was, became aggressive. Sometimes you need to be aggressive with the devil. Don't give the devil a chance to begin to manipulate your life. Jesus became aggressive and he moved towards that boy and he said, you demon, come out. And immediately the demon left the boy. And Jesus Christ now challenged the disciples and he said, this kind this kind cannot come out except by prayer and fasting. So prayer and fasting, it is another requisite that we can use in our Christian lives to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. If you are a believer and you don't take time to fast and pray, I can assure you, you shall never walk in God's victory. So I don't know the kind of problem you are passing through. Jesus said this kind cannot come out unless by prayer and fasting. That kind of your problem, that kind of a problem in your family, after this prayer and fasting program, it shall go in the name of Jesus. That kind of your problem in your job, in your career, in your ministry, in your business, in your ministry, it is going out after this prayer and fasting program. So there are certain demons that cannot go just by mere prayer. There are some demons which can only go if you mix prayer with fasting. Some demons are stubborn. I remember one time we were praying at church. I, me, I like conducting deliverances. Out! Come out! And there was a certain boy who came from another church. He thought he was very spiritual. So when I prayed, the lady fell down and she began to roll. Now him, he came walking majestically and he commanded the demon, come out! And the demon said, who are you? You can't command me to come out. Huh? You are a fornicator. You. So I just, the boy was embarrassed. And he almost wanted to sneak out of the church. So I just encouraged him to say, no, don't worry. This demon is just embarrassing you. It's just embarrassing you. Just, just, just continue moving around, interceding, just intercede, intercede. And then we casted out the demon in the name of the world because we are in prayer and fasting. So prayer and fasting is another requisite that you can use to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. If you want to be a Christian who shall walk in God's victory, take time to fast and pray. Because when you're praying and fasting, it simply means that you are showing to God that you depend on God. Prayer and fasting, it means that you are believing God to do what you need. Prayer and fasting is making our request be made known unto God. So I want to challenge and encourage you tonight that as we take time to pray and fast this year, even as we put our dependence on the Lord, our God which shall give us what we need. What is that which we need? It is to stay firm. In the Lord, stand firm in the Lord for what? For supernatural victories. That's what we need this year. So this year, depend on the Lord. As you pray and fast, put your defenders in the Lord. And the God of all the power shall make you and me to stand firm in him for supernatural victories. So prayer and fasting is another necessity which we can acquire from the Lord in order for us to stay firm, to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. The other requisite is praise and worship. Jehoshaphat and the tribe of Judah, they did what they, they conducted, praise and worship, in their battle formation. And the Lord guaranteed them victory over the Moabites, Ammonites, and the people of Seir. Why? Because they sang songs of holiness unto the Lord. They conducted praise and worship before the Lord. And God guaranteed them victory over their enemies. 
They sang songs of holiness. They sang in the beauty of holiness. So that's why you praise members and you worship members as you are singing unto the Lord. Don't sing. Sing and don't sing. And to your singing, add holiness to the Lord. Then the Lord shall cause you to stand firm in him. And you shall receive what supernatural victories from the Lord above. So praise and worship. It is another requisite that we can acquire from the Lord in order for us to walk in God's supernatural victories. Jehoshaphat conducted, did what he organized the choir in the what in the battle formation. And as he organized the choir and they sang songs of holiness, they sang unto the Lord. In the beauty of holiness, the Lord that did what he set an ambush against the tribe of what? The people of, of Moab, the people of Ammon, and the people of Seir. He set an ambush over against them and granted victory over Jehoshaphat and who? And the tribe of Judah. Why? Because they conducted praise in the battle formation. So praise and worship. If you are living a life of praising God and worshiping God, the devil will never come near you. The devil will never defeat you. Hallelujah. Because praise and worship, it is another weapon that we can use to gain victory over Satan. Hallelujah. That's what your husband and the tribe of Judah did. Finally, number five, you need the presence of God and the virtues of God. When I'm talking about virtues of God, I'm talking about the elements of Jesus. That is blood, Blood, name, and what else? And the faithfulness of Jesus. So when your life is cleansed with the blood of Jesus, it means that your sins are forgiven. So the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. So when we are cleansed from all sins by the blood of Jesus, Jesus will come to stay in our lives. And when he's with us, then he shall make us to conquer every aspect of our lives. So John 1, first John 1 verse 7, the Bible says, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. Now that word cleans is a verb. It's a verb. And it is in the present passive imperative, which means a continuous command. We must always go, must continue to live lives that shall be cleansed from all our sins by the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus Christ is another Requisite that we can use to do what? To overcome the devil and live victorious lives. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus Christ is also another requisite because the poor casted out the demon from that slave girl and he said, that demon of the, the divination, he casted it out in the name of Jesus said, you, I mean Paul and Silas, he said, you demon of what? Divination, come out of this girl and it left in the name of Jesus. Now I want to declare in the name of Jesus over your life that God is granting you victory in every area of your life in the name of Jesus Christ because in the name of Jesus Christ there's the power to make things happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 the Bible says Paul says ah, I am crucified with Christ it's no longer me who lives but Christ in me who lives so I've come to encourage you beloved that uh, we need to have Jesus in our lives if we are to conquer in our lives if we are to, uh, to, 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 to experience supernatural victories over our lives, Jesus must be with us. When Jesus Christ is with us and is the owner and the author and the originator of victory, he shall grant us victory in every area of our lives. What we just need to do is to, to have hearts of faith before the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Because when you have faith in God and you pray, you shall believe that uh, that thing that you have prayed for, even if it is not so, it shall be so because the Lord has said so. So five unfailing requisites if we want to stand firm in the Lord for supernatural victories. Number one, stand in authority of your position in Christ. Number two, be armed with the word of the Lord. Number three, Live a life of praising God and worshiping God. Number four, live a life of prayer and fasting. Number five, carry the praises and the virtues of Jesus Christ in your life. If you acquire these five necessities, I can assure you, you shall stand firm in the Lord for supernatural 
victories. God bless his word. So shall we be upstanding? As I pray. Or you can be seated if you don't mind. If you can, can manage to stand, you can be seated. So I just want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, we come before you. And we appreciate you so very much for the word. Today, we have learned the five unfading requisites that shall make us and propel us to stand firm in the Jehovah for supernatural victories. We shall be the people who shall stand in the authority of our position in Christ. We shall be armed with your word. My God, we shall live lives of prayer and fasting. In the name of Jesus, we shall be living lives of praising you and worshiping you. We shall carry the presence of God in our lives and the virtues of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that as we do that, my God, this year and for the rest of the years that are ahead of us, we shall stand firm in God for supernatural victories. Now as you do that, beloved, tonight, as you make a decision to acquire these five requisites, may God cause you to stand firm in Him for supernatural victories victories after you have met the requirements of the Lord. God bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you so much. As we are standing or sitting, if you have come with a tithe and offering, we have an opportunity to give our shares. Please, any of the two shares quickly. We can give to the Lord. Thank you. Are we blessed to church? Hallelujah. What a powerful word. If you, if you have been following all the messages which was coming, where the man of God has started, where the second day Bishop Mukuka has left, coming out of the victim's mindset. Hallelujah. So we are standing firm, Lord. We thank you, Reverend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Don't miss tomorrow. Looking forward to see you at the sharp 18 so that we can have a time to worship and praise the Lord before we receive the word. Let's close your eyes. Let's close your eyes. If you have a tithe and offering, just as the shares pass, drop it and just close your eyes and connect it to the word of God. Hallelujah. The Lord has been precisely speaking to us. Hallelujah. 2022, hallelujah. We are going to succeed. We are going to have a supernatural victory. And the man of God has clearly, precisely explained how the necessary ingredient element which we needed so that we can have our supernatural victory. Hallelujah. Oh, to the Lord, Lord, meditate on that word, meditate on that word, meditate on that word, and to the Lord, here I surrender to you. On the fourth evening, I surrender to you. Fourth evening, I surrender to you, O oh God. Oh, hallelujah, rule of all, just worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As the man of God said, we need to be a church that prays and worship. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We give all the glory unto you, O God. Thank you, Father, for the word which came to us, the power and authority and clarity. Lord, tonight we receive it. Many areas we fail, but tonight, thank you for the encouraging us, O God. We will not lose the battle 2022. We will win the battle because we are in Christ. We are with Christ. And you are the one who fights for us. You are the one who goes with us, O God. It is your victory, not our victory, O God. Lord, continue to use the man of God tomorrow as he comes. Lord, we pray for your people, the sacrificial well, the dedication to come to the sanctuary this evening and pray. And even the sacrificial giving of God, we pray God will bless them. Let them not lack. Lord, I pray. 
during this season any of them feel weak or any uneasiness may you heal them in the name of Jesus Jehovah Rapha the blood of Jesus will heal them oh God Lord I pray no demonic attack no inconveniencing situation spiritually relationally physically legally will never come to the territory of house of prayer so that we can tune with one heart and one accord to pray and fast oh God as your people go take them safely oh God bring them back give them a wonderful night heavenly visions and dreams oh God bring them back tomorrow at 18 hours now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever amen and amen God bless you have a blessed night as you are driving somebody need a lift to give somebody lift to God will bless you see you tomorrow sharp 18 man of reverence Zikanika thank you so much we are blessed from glory love, from glory love.